Hi, and welcome to this week's Walk the Woo Way. Today, we are talking all about uh, surviving and thriving as a highly sensitive person. And that includes most of my clients, yeah. sensitive so, people. So, so, I'm surrounded by sensitive people. Yeah, yeah. And isn't that, isn't that nice for you? Fantastic. Uh, sensitive people are, are wonderful and, and yeah. we'll talk about why it's a wonderful asset. So in this video, we really want to get to grips with what's going on when you're a highly sensitive person and what, what are the solutions? What can you do about it so that your sensitivity, your emotional sensitivity it becomes a real asset to yeah. you rather than a, an anchor yeah. that weighs down your life and, and disrupts your life? And perhaps even your greatest asset. You yeah, know, if it's absolutely. used correctly, it can be your greatest asset. If you're new to our channel and want to know how Wu Wei Wisdom can help you flow effortlessly through life, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notifications button to receive all our latest video updates. So the traditional model, I guess, of uh, a highly sensitive person, uh, I mean, the, uh, this is like more um, um, it's becoming to like modern parlance, this concept of a highly sensitive person. But to be clear, what we're talking about is people who are emotionally very sensitive or at the extreme hypersensitive. So we're not, we're not talking about physical sensitivity or attention deficit disorder. We're talking about the sort of clients who come to you who have Ex experience extreme emotional feelings and have difficulty managing it. And I think that's important to say because the word sensitive or overly sensitive mm -hmm. or extremely sensitive has many kind of definitions. So it's very important to get your definition yeah. correct on what you mean yeah. when you say phrases like, I'm a very sensitive person. Mm -hmm. What is it you actually are saying? Yeah. And I talk with my clients a lot about this phrase of being sensitive and overly sensitive. Mm -hmm. And I did a little bit of prior research on the topic because I knew we were doing the video. And so much of what I read was, you know, 10 signs that you're a, a, a highly sensitive person. Um, it was very much focused on how, how bad it is, how, how you'll feel terrible in this situation, terrible in that situation. Um, and the solution often was offered out is, well, you have to develop a, a kind of immunity, uh, a sense, a, an emotional immunity to, for your emotions. You kind of have to block them off. And, mm. and, and that's really, we want to say <clears throat> that's absolutely not, we don't believe is the solution. No, it's, it's absolutely at odds with the Wu Wei model. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people can, when they first get introduced to the Wu Wei model, they believe I'm saying, ignore your mm -hmm. feelings or uh, avoid your feelings. And I'm always saying the opposite, uh, interpret your feelings. Mm -hmm. So being a highly sensitive person does not automatically mean you're going to have red light feelings. Mm -hmm. It doesn't follow. Having red light feelings means you're not dealing with the situation that you're faced with in the correct manner. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with you being highly sensitive or undersensitive or what other word you want to use. Sensitivity is one of, if you are, if you judge yourself to be a sensitive person, mm -hmm. wonderful. That means you can sensitively deal with issues that come into your life. You should be so proud of yourself. And it's about using that term and using it correctly so it can help you. Yeah. And um, sensitivity, as far as you're concerned, and as you've said, um, it is an asset. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a quality um, that is a real positive. You're, you're more compassionate. You're... you're uh, more creative, you're more understanding of other people's needs, you're more empathetic, you're often more intuitive. Yes. Um, these are all great qualities. You know, you have, a, I would say, like a richer inner world of experiences. You know, you there's a lot going on inside you, and that can all be a positive. But I know... But where, can I just before <laughs> yeah. you, but where it goes wrong... Yeah. What Alex has just said was great. And did, did you hear what you just said for other people? Where a lot of sensitive people go wrong is they don't 
employ that for themselves. They're very good at being empathetic and sympathy and sympathetic to other people's thoughts mm -hmm. and feelings, but they don't mm -hmm. do it to themselves mm -hmm. and they create that separation. Yeah. And so therefore, this is one of the problems. They see being sympathetic and being sensitive as a weakness and it's not a weakness mm -hmm. it's your strength don't use it as a weakness so again it's how you define that term being a sensitive person so i know in the Wu Wei model we we believe like characteristics such as sensitivity creativity imagination all those things mm -hmm. they are qualities they have an energy to yes. them yes. so if Wu Wei imbalance sensitivity is all the good stuff we talked about, compassion. For yourself yeah, and for very others. Very compassionate, comparing, yeah. um, very kind of in tune with what's going on around you. Yourself. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the Wu Wei. Yes, yes. What, when the energy moves out of balance, I guess that's when we hit problems. That's when we hit problems and we're on to the, the swinging pendulum now, which I'll talk about. So. Alex mentioned three qualities and I thought several years ago, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, what is it that my clients have in co common? Do they have anything in common? <laughs> uh, and, and I started to identify three characteristics that my, my, my clients have in common. Not every client, but things they have in common. Number one is what we're talking about now, sensitivity, which we're going to concentrate on. Let me just give you the, the, other, the other two. Creativity and determination. So my clients are sensitive, creative, and determined people. Now, when those three are in balance, in Wu Wei, well, you couldn't wish for anything better, could you? You couldn't wish for a person who's sensitive, creative, and determined when they're in balance. But when they go out of balance, when they go into Yu Wei, as the Chinese say, when that's Wu Wei out of balance is Yu Wei, then you have the problem. So let's go back now, let's reel back and go back to sensitivity. So remember, we often talk about the pendulum swinging. Mm -hmm. So the pendulum for sensitivity is one side is this ultra sensitive person. Hypersensitive. Hypersensitive. Thank you, Alex. That's a much better word. Hypersensitive. Do you, do you know these type of persons, like you're walking on eggshells around them? If you say the wrong word, it goes, or you may be that person. If somebody says the, slightest the, wrong, thing. the slightest thing, the wrong look, even, even I, this is what I hear time and time and time again. I know what they're thinking. You don't know what they're thinking. Yes, I do. I can pick it up. I'm very sensitive. I know what's going on in their mind. And they become this hypersensitive person, almost imagining what's going on around them and what's going on and what could happen, what might happen, what should happen. And they create, here's the imagination, they create this a kind of image about everything's going to go wrong, I'm not going to be able to cope, I'm not good enough. And they, from that sensitivity going out of balance, they create these worlds that mm -hmm. don't exist. Um, if I, so as a starting point, you're saying I, I'm more, as a sensitive person, I'm more likely to uh, tune in to things yes. that are going on, whether yes. it's other people, yes. how other people are, or what other people are thinking, or stuff going on around me in the external world. That's a kind of a given. But I then amplify it yes. you because swing of it my out. imagination. That's right. You swing and that it out of balance. It to the extreme, the and energy it's... of sensitivity to the extreme. Exactly. And this is when people sometimes misunderstand what, as when I'm saying, when I say, stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Stop doing it. When you see yourself swinging out of balance, don't carry on swinging. Stop. Take a breath. Drop your shoulders and then do the golden thread because you're swinging from that natural beauty, that awesomeness mm -hmm. of being sensitive to being hypersensitive, to being ridiculously sensitive, to creating all of these illusions. So that's one way. Yeah. Here's the other way. And here's the other way, these people who put up a brick wall, who are you can't get close to, who could look at you and could kill you at 10 paces, who cross their arms and go, hmm. And these are the- real hard, hard nose, they're not hard sensitive nose. at all. Exactly. They're trying to pretend 
or they do they believe they're not Ex sensitive? They, exactly. They've gone too far the other way. And these okay. are sensitive people As well. who have come up with this idea of being like a brick wall, like like uh, you can't get to them. And you must know these people who actually you you you, you like you, you seem as though you're bouncing mm -hmm. off their their walls of protection. But these are just sensitive people and they've swung the other way. Mm -hmm. So both of these extremes, these you way are just and as bad as each other. And you. Yeah, why you. W-E-I, you -E -I, U way. Yeah, instead of wu way, why you. So the Chinese say you way, <laughs> like you're... <laughs> it is, it's all it's about you. It's very funny because we could change that into English and say it's all about me, yeah. me, me, yeah. my sensitivity. How about me? And Poor that, me. I and can't that cope. then becomes the overwhelm because, you know, they, they get sensitive people are, are triggered more easily. And we'll talk about the kind of history of where this comes from. They trigger more easily than what you're saying is their creativity, their imagination of how bad it is or what people are saying or what people are thinking, inflame it and it push them to the extreme. To the extreme. And, and you can swing between And the you two. can swing, I was just going to say. And you're not stuck in one of these extremes, you know, because you can swing. You can, you can be one minute like, oh, I don't care what other people are. I, they can go and get lost. Have you heard this? They can go and do one. And then in a minute, they'll be crying and going, poo me and nobody loves me. I'm all on my own. And they can swing from one to the other. And this is the worst type of client because you can't hold on to them. This is why I came up with the word, stop it. Mm. Stop, take a breath. Let's bring yourself into the center. Let's not disregard your greatest assets of being sensitive. Let's deal with you in a sensitive, caring, compassionate way. And you can do that in Wu Wei, in that center line, finding your flow, being in your flow, isn't this much better? You know, being sensitive is a great asset. It's not a disadvantage. It's like being left-handed. You can't change the world to deal with your sensitivity like you can't change the world to deal with being left-handed. You've got to find a way to adapt to flow, and this is what Wu Wei means. But... <laughs> Playing devil's advocate. You know... If people were more considerate, um, you know, if they understood that I'm a very sensitive person and people were more considerate, then it would be a lot easier for me. I, I, un I understand the model of what you've just said. And, and it, yeah, it would be great if I was in Wu Wei with my sensitivity, but I just can't control my swinging. It's everything else that's going on around me. It's like triggering me all the time. So what, So I would say to that question, which I hear all of the time that Alex has just voiced, why do you want other people to make the changes that you don't want to make. You can't be bothered to deal with your sensitivity correctly and authentically and truthfully and honestly, yet you expect strangers and reality of the outside world to make allowances for you. This is not Wu Wei. You are not poor me. You are not a victim. You are not weak. The world doesn't owe you something. This is where you have to come into that reality and you have to take self-responsibility. How often do we hear us talking about compassionate self-responsibility? So responsibility isn't being hard on yourself and beating yourself up. That's swinging to the extreme. Self-responsibility, compassionate self-responsibility is loving yourself mm -hmm. but taking responsibility, not expecting the outside world, the faceless jury to change, to suit you. I'm sorry, it won't work. Mm -hmm. And you can spend your whole life trying to do this. You can spend your whole life thinking, I'm a victim, poor me. If only people thought this, if only people did this, if only yeah. people changed, I would be a lot happier. <laughs> It won't work. Stop it. Mm. This line of thinking will not work. You have to come back to your truth, to your honesty. You have to be sensitive, compassionate and caring with yourself first. And then you move forward. It, it feels, or I believe I'm at a disadvantage. You know, this is, I was just born this way. There's nothing I can do about it. And I've read, you know, the studies out there saying uh, 
you know, it, it's just the way I'm hard, I'm hardwired. Would you say it's nature or nurture, this hyper predisposition to being emotionally I th hypersensitive? I think, I, th I think that's a great question. I think it's a bit of both. I think like being left-handed, uh, a child is born sensitive, mm -hmm. more aware, but that's a good thing. That means they're more aware and they'll probably be more creative, more artistic, mm -hmm. more into music or art or, or expressive or writing or telling stories or loving stories. So that's quite natural. The problem is, like every other part of us, we have to have some kind of emotional education to teach us how we deal with that asset. asset. It's like having a Ferrari. You have to learn how to drive a Ferrari. You don't get thrown into a Ferrari and drive it. It's like swimming. You shouldn't be thrown into the deep end and learn how to swim. You're taught how to swim and you should be taught how to deal with this wonderful quality you have. And here's the problem. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> here's the problem. A lot of our parents, our teachers, I love the way that um, in Chinese language, parenting and teaching is almost the same word. A lot of our parents are also having difficulty with their sensitivity. And so they can't teach us as children how to deal with our sensitivity because they can't. Mm -hmm. So those are the parents that will be hard, unloving, uncaring. Or pick yourself up or uh, don't be so silly. Or, or the other way, overprotective, yeah. putting yeah. you into a bubble, keeping you overly protected. So if your parents haven't got that skill, how can they teach you? Yeah. Here's the example. Let's just presume your parents could not read. How could they teach you how to read if mm -hmm. they can't read? So look at your parents and look at their emotional education. Mm -hmm. Look on how they deal with issues and situations in their lives. Look back quietly. It's a very good meditation. Make yourself a cup of tea after watching this and think about watching, not how it affected you, how they de dealt with their situations, with their problems, with yeah. their life challenges. How could they deal with it? What was their emotional education mm -hmm. like? And the truth is, if their emotional education wasn't good, then they haven't taught you. This is now your responsibility to learn this. And this is why we do these videos. So you can challenge, you can ask questions, you can learn, you can share, you can start to build up your, it's like going to night school. It's like going to emotional night school. You're learning, like learning a new language. You've got this great asset, this great skill, this wonderful, that makes you awesome learn how to use it effectively. Yeah, and I think this idea of, um, I guess some parents can either make the child feel, not ashamed, but you know, it's a bad thing, uh, you know, pull yourself together or try and put the child in a protective bubble. Um, neither of those work. No, both extremes. But, but if you, if you, if only been taught that, then you will carry that yes. through to adulthood, yes. that lack of understanding yes. about this positive quality. Yes. And so then you rebrand that po positive quality as a problem. As a problem. Exactly. A problem. Again, use that left hand analogy. If you were told, if you were born left handed and you were told, oh, uh, that means you know, you're, you're, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with your brain. You've got to reprogram you've got, yourself. You've got to, you've got to reprogram you've... yourself. Let me, let me tie your left hand up and get used, yes. which they used to do. Yeah. At, 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 <laughs> at, at my school, I can remember a, a friend, a friend of mine who was left-handed and I'm not that old. And the teacher coming and hitting him with a ruler when he was using his left hand. And he said, that's how you get taught to use your right yeah. hand. And so you're constantly taught, constantly reinforced that this is wrong. You shouldn't be sensitive. You've got to be tough. You've got to be hard. People will take advantage of you. They'll then, use you as a yeah. doormat. Don't do it. Don't because do it. Because then you're not being authentic. Exactly. If you're, and, and this is where the problem comes. If you're not honest with yourself about, you know, I have this characteristic, this great quality, and see it as a great quality, but if you're not, if you just see it as a problem, yeah and then try to shoehorn yourself into being like like your friends or like the magazines say you should have to be and, and bottle everything down. You can't 
bury that energy, can you? You can't no. bury that authentic part no. of you. And no. does that then create more problems? Well, it, it creates more problems because it then it comes out as, in, as into, into the extreme. Or then you teach yourself, you give yourself a vow, you say something like, I've got to be tougher. I'm not going to let anybody take advantage yeah. of me. I, I'm going to show them how much I've been hurt. I'm going to hurt them more and then they'll realise. Yeah. Or you go to the other way and then you adopt the poor me. I can't cope. The world's too much. Yeah. I'm not good enough. All the three lies that we talk about each week, don't we? I'm unlovable. I can't cope. I'm not good enough. And then you tell yourself that. And then you swing from one to the other and you look at other people and then you go into the CCJ, comparing, criticizing and being judgmental. And that's reinfecting and, that, and inflaming the sensitivity. That's right. Look at them. They yeah. can cope better than me. Why can they cope and I can't cope? Why do they get upset and I don't get upset? Or why do I get upset and they don't get upset? Or I'm always crying. Or I, and then the biggest thing, if we can get this across in this video, the biggest thing that people then do is the worst thing is they avoid. They avoid the situation. They think the best way is, and this normally comes out in confrontation. You hear people saying, oh, I hate confrontation. I can't deal with so confrontation. So this could be in a relationship, Ship anywhere in your career, dealing with family issues, dealing with money issues, anything. Yep, and this is what I hear. Uh, the statement is, I can't deal with confrontation. I ask them the golden question, why? Next question, because I'm oversensitive. What does that mean? That means you're choosing not to deal with that confrontation. You're avoiding the confrontation and you're justifying it by saying you're oversensitive. But David, it's so much harder for me. You don't understand. It's so, I'm, you know, it's okay for people who aren't as highly sensitive or, uh, you know, I, the energy of a confrontation, it's just like overwhelming for me. It's okay to say, oh, just confront, but you don't realize how bad it is. Yeah, and then you've got to learn. And, th and this is why I can tell you why I, um, w w um, w w w the clients won't stay with me because I want to teach them how to confront. There's a massive difference between confrontation and confronting. Yeah. And here's the big difference. It takes two people to make a confrontation. It takes two. Mm -hmm. And if you refuse to engage in that confrontation, there can never be a confrontation. Yeah. But you should confront the issue. But here we go. Why don't you confront the situation with your sensitivity? Why don't you sensitively confront the situation. So if someone's blowing their top and steam is coming out of their ear ears, I always think of those cartoons, you know, when the eyes come out <laughs> on two. Uh, yeah. Just let them do that for a second, drop your shoulders, take a breath and bring them back mm -hmm. to the issue. Because what they're showing you is they've got the same problem as you. They can't they don't deal know with how to and they have swung in the Wu way. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. This is the teaching. This is the teaching. They're over here. Don't you go over here. Yeah. Bring them into the center. How you bring someone into the center? By you adopting the center. Yeah. You coming into your Wu Wei. When they're shouting and screaming, you just sit there and look them right in the eye. Smile. And when they finish, you say, shall I make a cup of tea? We can talk yeah. about the problem now. And you've got to learn that. I don't expect to snap my mm. fingers and you get mm. that on first go. This is homework. This is what you have to practice to do. Start by talk. small. <laughs> exactly. Start with small things Absolute. rather than, you Absolutely. know, the, wor the worst confrontation you've been avoiding Absolutely. for years. Absolutely. Start, and start then, small. I think, start start in, yeah. the, in our community. And often, start discussing. Start having a different point of view. Don't just agree with, pe with people and say what you believe and back up what you believe. Give the evidence and enter into a conversation. It might be good to do it on paper and have a disagreement. That's okay, because if you have a disagreement, it means two intelligent people have a different point of view and then come together, listen to the other per person's point of view. As I often say in all the videos, listen to what I'm saying, think about it. If you disagree, write below 
why you disagree and give me the reasons. Don't just say, oh, I disagree. That's a load of rubbish, David. I can't do that. Tell me why you can't do it. Tell me why I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Tell me why I'm wrong. Give me your evidence and then we can enter into a discussion and then we can find that Wu Wei between mm -hmm. us. Because if for you, I just might be using a wrong word. And once we correct the word, yeah. then you see the way through. I think in situations with confrontation or the prospect of confronting something that gets your emotions jangled, often it's you imagine so ten imagination. different imaginations. So your your qual your great quality of creative imagination, coupled with your great quality of sensitivity, kind of are tightly knitted together, and they you imagine so many kind of what they're going to say to me, and it's going to be awful, and it's going to be this, that, and the other, and it's almost like you run through every possible worst case scenario of the outcome because you are a sensitive, creative person. That you you it, you just want to avoid it at all costs, and so I think this idea of starting within first and getting your mindset and calm and clear about not letting this imagination go down the train track of worst case scenarios, getting that clear. And then that allows you to be in that Wu Wei position where you can then actually enter into the discussion with um, the person in a, in a more balanced place. I, I, I absolutely agree with your, with your analysis of that, Alex, because then you see another quality of your mind. Remember, we call it the human-centered mind. Some people call it the ego, but that gets confusing for me because you get confusing Freudian to ego and all like that. That's why we prefer to call it HCM, human-centered mind. So the human-centered mind is not your enemy. It's not trying to screw up your life. It's actually trying to protect you. It's actually trying to keep you safe. It's actually trying to keep you in your comfort zone. So when you start to use your creativity and imagine all these worst case scenarios, oh yes, but if I say that to him or to her, I know what's gonna happen. She's gonna blow up. We're gonna have a big argument. Nothing solved with a big argument. Then we're gonna fall out. Then we're gonna, and then it's done all, all of that. So what the mind does, it runs all of those scenarios and we've got a word for this and a phrase for this haven't we better to think negative in case it happens <laughs> it's not yeah. it's not protecting mm -hmm. you it's much better to learn as Alex says first of all really meditate and think about your sensitivity and perhaps on the next meditation I can do a meditation on sensitivity just let me know and see it as for what it is. Really examine the word. What do you mean when you say, I am a sensitive person? Does that mean you can't live your life normally? Does that mean that the world's got to change around you? Does that mean you've got to be putting cotton wool and everybody's got to agree with you? Wouldn't that be a terrible, boring life if everybody agreed with you? Everything you said, everybody went, oh yes, yes, you're right, yes, you're right. You know they're lying to you. That would be a terrible life to live. So think about it for yourself, what that sensitivity means. Then, once you've got it clear, what that sensitivity means, then as Alex says, go on to the next step. Keep it small. Being in our community, writing things, when somebody says something and you've got a different point of view, learn how to express your point of view, calmly, authentically, truthfully, with love with sensitivity. How, how do I, when I'm in a situation where I'm kind of confronting, which perhaps I wouldn't normally do because I'd, I'd avoid it, and I'm normally blown all over the place because I can pick on, up on people's emotions, you know, people have a right to be angry, people have a right to be sad, people have a right to be upset. They do, including and, and you. I'm, including me, and I'm very um, tuned into that because I've, I'm naturally a very sensitive person. How do I stop myself and stay in the Wu Wei, the, that balanced, calm place, how do I stop myself taking all of that on board like a sponge 
um, without completely like blocking myself off because I, I can I get what you're saying. It's a really good asset to be compassionate and intuitive and empathetic. But it's like do a, I, I don't want to shut myself down completely and shut myself off because mm. that's not my authentic way. No. But how do I put in place a kind of a, a system where I'm not literally absorbing every emotion, everything that's going on in the external world around me that is not good? Well, that, that's what we call the golden thread. So my question would be, is why do you want to absorb other people's emotions? And it feels like... No, you give me a feeling. <laughs> why feel, do you... No, if you yeah. play that devil's <laughs> yeah, yeah, advocate, yeah. can you play this okay, devil's yeah, advocate? Sure. I would ask you, why, Alex, do you want to absorb their emotions? Okay. So, <laughs> without using the feel without word. Without using okay. the, see? Because <laughs> I was going to say, it feels like no, this is a very, natural, no, this is very it's just important. a natural way. It's very yeah. important. Okay. And when you're doing this, did, okay. did you see, and Alex is doing you a great service here. <laughs> I know she's making it up. But you see how you want to use the feel word. Because okay. when you use the feel word, it allows you to say these things that okay. you can't. So let so me answer. Let me just, before, okay. before you answer, let me just give you the teaching. <laughs> Stop using I feel. Okay. I think, I believe, I choose. I think, I believe, I choose instead of I feel. Okay. Right. So the question is, why do I why, why want do you, to absorb well, yes. like a sponge? Yes. Every because? I, because I believe that it's just something that happens and then I have to deal with the negative consequences of that because it gives me lots of red light feelings. So what I've just heard yeah. Alex says is Alex is not in control of herself. Mm. Well, I definitely haven't it I there's the external world and people around me and yep. whether they're angry, sad, upset, bad things happening. And there's me, and I tune into that a lot. Very Why do you easy. choose to tune into it a lot? I guess I'm not aware that I was making a choice, but I don't want to not. No. I don't want to not tune in. But why don't you? Because I think it's why important don't you to be aware. No, I know I agree with yeah. you. Why don't you tune in to the amount that's appropriate for you? Mm. Why don't you take responsibility for your tuning? Mm -hmm. Like creating some sort of filtering system. If you want to use that, why don't you create a filtering system? How would I do that? How, well, how are you not <laughs> doing that? Well, so, so, let, yeah. so, so we don't get tied yeah. in with, with this. So the question is, how do I create a filtering system? How do I learn to An adjust? An appropriate, authentic <clears throat> filtering system. How do system? I learn to be appropriate? You practice, that's what we're saying. You start on small things, yeah. and then you find out what what is it that's acceptable and appropriate mm -hmm. for you, and you go back to your beliefs. See, if when Alex was playing that role play, one of her beliefs is, I can't do anything about that. Yeah. I challenged that, and then she was stuck. Is that true? You can't do anything well, about it? Well, I think it. I just, you know, coming at it from the position that I wasn't, Really aware that I had a choice. Well, do you believe you have a well, choice? Well, I can see now I have a choice and I am mm. making the choice to be open to everything because I believe it's wrong to close myself off from everything. I agree. So, what, so if they're, the, they're also, the two extremes, aren't they? That's it, what we're saying. But, it, but if it's wrong to close yourself off, yeah. it's equally as wrong to be open to everything. What would be the center of the Wu Wei? The Wu Wei is, well, I, I would say be aware. Mm -hmm. thinking about this now be aware of what's happening around you tune into that of course because that's important that you are Absolutely. tuned in so you can be responsive and compassionate where Absolutely. required Absolutely. and you can adapt to what you're doing if required but don't let it tip your emotions out of balance and why would you let it tip your emotions out of balance I think if you then started to ruminate on it and why, believe it was your responsibility why do you, to, uh, uh, so, to see, deal with everyone else's problems. See, so we've just gone down to yeah. a belief now. Why do you believe it's your responsibility to deal with other people's problems? Um, 
See, so what yeah. we've just done there is just done a little bit of golden thread. Yeah. Why, why, why? You can do this for yourself. Sit with a cup of tea mm. and just do what I'm doing mm. to you. Do it to yourself. Why? So we've just I gone think, down mm. to, if, <laughs> if you went down to where Alex got down to, I believe I am responsible or for Or to make the, it better, to make it better I, for why people. Do you, why do you believe yeah. it's your yeah, responsibility yeah. to make it better yeah. for, other, for other people? I think if you love someone, you want to make it better for them. Okay. But the adult... How do you know what's better for exactly. them? Exactly. Well, this is the thing. So, I think it's like... I mean, this is where the inner child comes in as well, right. isn't it? And so and so, this comes right back down. You see... Because it almost like goes right mm, down to right the inner down. child. When, you, when your emotions get jangled, the thoughts that come up, oh, I've got to make it better, I've got to make it better, I don't like this at all. It's definitely like the inner child talking. It's like a child... Rather than it, it doesn't. To me, it's not like an adult, an authentic, balanced no. adult talking. It's the child. It so is. What, it's that part. It's part of your mind. So let me just go over quickly for those people who are just watching this one. When we talk about the inner child, we're not talking about another person mm -hmm. or anything else or nothing weird. We're talking about a part of your mind that's almost been frozen in childhood. A part of your mind that um, addressed the problem and couldn't deal with it, and then closed down. So what, what, um, what Alex has just discovered, if she was doing that role play, is there's a part of her mind that wants everybody to be happy, wants to make it right for everyone. The problem is, in reality, that can't work. And then she's got this problem. Her mind wants something, and mm. reality is not going to happen, and that creates and a separation, you, yeah. and that creates the red lights. So you have to go back down, and you have to readdress that belief yeah. can you make it right for and for everyone else what do you know what's right for and for anybody else is it right for me to tell you what you should be doing i wouldn't even attempt to i don't think it's right i'm just giving you a teaching you take that teaching and either reject it or you take a little bit of it or you adapt it mm -hmm. that's your responsibility so if you believe for instance in self responsibility that we're talking about right now surely that applies to everyone we're all self responsible yeah. for our emotions it's not your job to make it right for your partner for your children for your clients, for your fr clients even, for your friends yeah. you know i often say to my clients i cannot change your belief system and even if i could i wouldn't because that's too much of a responsibility your belief system is yours mm -hmm. you have to take responsibility i can do what i'm doing here i can challenge it i can help you to see it in another way but i can't change your belief system and when you look at your belief system make sure it's yours so as alex has just demonstrated if if her belief system was I'm a lovely person, I'm really kind, I'm really sensitive, I'm really compassionate. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I want to help everyone else. Doesn't that sound wonderful? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. How about if that person doesn't want to be helped? How about if that person disagrees with your views? How about if that person is going on, on a different road? Why should they follow you? Perhaps that person wants to be angry at that yeah. moment. And this comes back to self-love and, and that you you think every, I will feel good if I can uh, you know I know things are going wrong with this person or that person I will feel better if I know they're okay I have to make it okay for them but what you're not doing is you're not looking after yourself first so this comes back to all the teachings we've done on self-love okay I don't know whether we've got time on this video because I see we're running a bit over now I will put a link to the self-love video but this is a very very important thing because what I'm going to say now is going to sound really horrible in some ways when you're doing what Alex mm -hmm. is, is suggesting it's very selfish because what you're saying is I don't want to feel bad I don't want to have confrontation so if I can make it right for them then that's going to make me feel yeah. better. Yeah. And I would say that's too complicated. Why you don't you just take responsibility for you yeah. feeling better? Yeah. And they go, oh, well, that's selfish. No, no, what you're doing is selfish. You're saying if everybody lived the way that I wanted them to live, if the world, I said this to a client just last week, I said, if the world was the way you wanted to be, wouldn't everything be happening? And she said, yes, that would be fantastic. 
But it's, it's not going to work that way. That's a Disney world or and also, a utopian. It's hard. It's, well, it's never going to happen. And this is why you do get overwhelmed as a highly sensitive person, why you do get exhausted, why you do get burned out, because you are trying to manipulate and, and control other people, external situations, so you don't feel so emotionally fraught with your sensitivity, but actually you've got to focus on you exactly. and how you manage your emotions and I just stay wanted, in that way. I just wanted to jump in there before yeah. you, move, you moved on, because what you were describing was the third, remember? Sensitivity, yeah. creativity, determination. Turns into stubbornness. And so even though you know it's wrong, you will stubbornly carry on. Yeah. And if anybody tells you that people so suffering from anxiety, stress, depression, and all of these modern words are somehow weak, I tell you they are not. They are the most stubborn people. Mm -hmm. And they all, when I say this to them, they always smile as though it's something to be proud of. But you're stubbornly trying to achieve something you can't achieve. And you hold on to it like a dog. You know, when you get a dog and they hold the bone and they won't let go and you shake them. Yeah. Stop it. You can't get the world to be the way that you want it to be. Step back, be compassionate, be sensitive, be comparing for yourself. Mm -hmm. Find the best way, the flow, be flexible, be like that river. You know, the Taoists are always talking about the way of water. Watch water, how it flows. Think about it now, how water flows down from the mountains to the sea. It doesn't stick to one course. It flows around rocks and boulders and land masses and it finds its way to the sea. And that's how we should be living our life. We should be true to ourselves. We should be honest. We should have integrity. We should be uh, have a very strong sense of purpose of what the Chinese call yi, intention. And we should be self-responsibility. If you're this sensitive person, I'm really pleased to know you. I'm really pleased you're looking at our videos. This is a great quality that you have. This makes you awesome. Please, please, please learn to use it correctly. Mm -hmm. And if nobody's taught it to you, then take it on as your responsibility. Yeah. As an asset to be as an cherished. As asset, absolutely. You have a yeah. Ferrari. <laughs> you have... You are so immense. You are so awesome. You have this Ferrari. You've got a powerful engine. Learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. Learn to use that sensitivity correctly yeah. for yourself first. Look after yourself first. Be sensitive with yourself. A lot of my clients who are sensitive, you know what? They beat themselves up unmercifully. Mm. They are so hard on themselves. It makes me cringe when I hear what they do to themselves, what they say to themselves, what that self-talk. Start there. Mm. Stop it. Stop doing that. Be sensitive and caring and loving and compassionate and all the things that Alex says for yourself first and then practice on other people. And I think, I mean, we've talked about acknowledging that you are a highly sensitive person and that is an asset. Taking self-responsibility is obviously the first thing. Doing the deeper inner work, so golden thread work, inner child work, to get to the lies the, in your belief system that are being triggered by external situations. That's start with yourself first. Yeah. Then in terms of dealing with the external world, we talked about confronting more love with love and with sensitivity love and, compassion. and compassion confront and the more you confront the, the easier better it will you become. get at it yeah we've talked about having making the choice to put a filtering system in place yes. that you don't absorb everything like a sponge without and, question and realizing that not putting a filter there is a choice is a choice so yeah. here comes a teaching not making a choice is yeah. making a choice. Yeah. You are choosing not to put a filter yeah. there. Ask yourself why you're choosing not to put a filter there. And I think... Can I just leave yeah. one yeah. little bit of homework? So start with this. As you finish watching this video, get a piece of paper and write on the top of it, sensitivity, and then try and explain what you mean, what's your definition of sensitivity. 
And then when you've got your definition, then you're explaining and you're describing who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. So be clear on what you mean by sensitive. Then if you want to class yourself as a highly sensitive person yeah. or a very sensitive person, what does that mean? Yeah. And ask yourself those why, 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 why questions. The golden thread. It's like finding it right down. And as Alex said, and she's so true, do not be surprised if this goes back to childhood. Remember, we're not trying to blame anyone or to put the blame onto anyone and see where you learned your emotional education. And if you're going, I didn't learn any emotional education, start now. Yeah. This is your time. Yeah, yeah. This is your time. Take responsibility. This is your life. You're awesome. You deserve it. You do it. Who else would you want to do your emotional education but you? Who is more equipped? Who is better qualified than you to teach yourself emotional education? Listen to our videos. Listen to other people's videos. Throw some of our stuff out. Take on their stuff and then find what you believe and then give the evidence why you believe it. And I think once you put yourself in that position of empowerment, that it, yeah. you know, it is an asset, I am taking self-responsibility, I, I want to cherish, savour and nurture my yeah. emotional sensitivity Cheering. rather than squash it down yeah. and pretend it's yeah. not part of the authentic yeah. me. Once you acknowledge that, you're, you can then be empowered to make positive choices about your, your career, your partners, your friendships, all based on knowing who you are as a person. Yeah. You know, I think often when people ignore the fact that, it, you know, I am emotionally sensitive, then they're making the wrong choices about partners, friends, careers, life, you know, lifestyle. Well, well the, pro the, problem, the problem is we've tried to identify in this video is don't use that term emotional sensitive or mm. being emotional mm. or hyper emotional as a get out of jail card yeah. free. Do not use it as a justification for not dealing with life. Do not use it as a justification for not addressing difficulties. One thing I will guarantee you in your life, you will have difficulties, uh, twists and turns, ups and downs, if you want to call them. Don't use that as a get out of jail card, as a trump card where you can excuse yourself and say, oh, I can't deal with that because you know I'm very sensitive. Deal with it. And, and this is where we can help you. You've got to learn that technique. It will seem to you uh, out of your comfort zone. That's good. It should be out of your comfort zone. As Alex said, great advice, little steps. Here comes a great Taoist saying. You've heard this saying, perhaps didn't realize it was a Taoist saying. How do you walk a thousand miles? You take the first step and then the second step. Little steps, mm -hmm. little steps. Start here. Make those lists for yourself. Do this as your homework for a month. Looking at these words, listening to this video, challenging yourself, confronting your beliefs. That's a great place for you to start. And then start in interacting in our Facebook community. And if somebody says something, learn how to challenge and learn how to put your point of view. Learn when somebody disagrees with you, how to deal with that, and then move on little steps at, at a time. Mm -hmm. Well, we've, we've discussed a lot of things big, and I, I would imagine a lot of people watching this video uh, can relate to this. We'd love to hear um, your thoughts on this, your own experiences, what practices you're putting into place, whether it's doing the deeper work or, or daily, daily work, daily practices for managing and cherishing your emotional sensitivity. I will put links to related videos on self-love and uh, people who care too much. I know we've done several videos. Not which caring what other people think. Not, well, caring what other people think of you, uh, which all feed into the kind of teachings around this topic. Any questions or comments, please post them below. As always, you know, we're always happy to hear from you and answer any questions you've got. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.